I think we're live. All right, hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. Welcome to Market Keys. Now today I am going to be reviewing TradingView. I am going to show you guys just how to navigate the platform and how to use different tools which are available to you. Now, I'm sure more, most of you know that TradingView is it has free plans and it also has paid plans. Um, to, if you're a beginner, like I was a few years ago, then you don't really need to use any paid plans right now. Right now, you just need to focus on learning to use the, the software program and, of course, learn to use it to help you make your trading easier. Because the entire point of trading view is to help you to you know automate some things and also help you with your technical analysis so that's definitely the number one use for trading view it helps people with their technical analysis so if you're a technical trader then this works perfectly for you also, if you're a fundamental trader and you want to get some confluence and you want to find exactly when and where to enter the market, then of course this tool is pretty helpful. All right, so this is the general view of everything. In the top left corner, you'll always see the the asset or the currency pair or the stock that you're trading because as you know trading involves a lot of different assets we have currencies we have metals we have stocks we have indices so yeah there's definitely a lot of things that we can do with trading view and what's available to us so top corner this is going to be your asset and this right here is your time frame because as you know different traders use different time frames based on the type of trade that they will be making generally intraday traders they would trade using the 30 minute chart or the 15 minute chart so let me just open this so you can see the different time intervals this goes all the way down to one second but if you're a free user I think only the one minute chart that's the lowest you can go on the free plan so as you can see right now I'm looking at GBP USD and this is basically the one minute chart now if I want to change it to the five minute chart I just do that so you see I would get a different type of look I personally I trade using the 30 minute chart so because for me I want to catch the moves as as they happen basically so yeah I'm more of an intraday trader right now um, but generally people who want to swing trade they will use either the one hour chart as their entry they can use the four hour chart as their entry. And some people go all the way up to daily chart, all the way up to the monthly chart, as a matter of fact. Okay, so right here you can see what's happening with regards to GBB USD on the monthly chart. So, for example, if we're looking at the monthly chart, each bar represents a month. So for example, we're in December now, so this would be the December candle. This one would be November, this one would be October, this one would be September, okay? Let's scale it down to maybe the daily or the weekly. Let's go to weekly. So this was this week, and that was the last week. So 
each candle on the weekly chart represents five trading days. I don't say seven because if you're trading Forex, usually the, the banks are only open Monday to Friday, so it's five trading days. So yeah, each of these candles represents a trading week comprised of five trading days for GBP USD. The next one would be the daily chart, and you know it's very simple. Of course, you know each candle represents 24 hours. So this is the third, this is the second, this is the first. Okay, very simple. So yeah, this is how you select the time frames that you want to trade with. Now, if you want your own custom time frame, then you're going to have to sign up for a plan. For example, if I want a two hour time frame, it's not really available. Well, sorry, not two hour, maybe six hours. Yeah, six hour time intervals are not really available for free users on TradingView. So if you want custom time intervals, you're definitely going to need to upgrade. Okay. So let me leave that. Okay. So yeah. And as you can see, guys, the higher time frames usually give you a, a better view of the market. So you can see exactly what's happening. Because for example, if you go to the one minute chart, you'll see a lot of, a lot of crazy things. It's like a lot of noise. And a lot of things happening but if you go to the 15 minute chart the noise becomes less you'll be able to see more and you'll be able to have less confusion okay I sometimes use the four hour chart to trade and I find it very beneficial so yeah all right so now that we've looked at the time frames now I want us to just take a look at chart patterns or, or the candlestick types. So as I mentioned before, um, on trading view when looking at the different time frames, each of these is a candle. Okay. Now you do have the ability to change what these candles look like. For example, many people love to use Haikinashi, myself included. And you can see Haikinashi is very smooth it makes all of the candles have a more less confusing look I would say so yeah compare this Haikinashi to what was there before and you'll see that it's a lot of green and red green and red green and red so generally people use Haikinashi to help them see the trends properly you see that Right here, we can clearly see that this was a downtrend. Then we can see that this was a little bit of an uptrend right here. So yeah, so this is the reason why most people love using the Haikinashi on the different time frames. It makes it very easy to see what type of trend the market is in, whether it's an uptrend or a downtrend. It's very simple. Okay, so that's the Haikinashi. You do also have other types. Because, of course, you know that you have the line chart. I don't use a line chart particularly, but I know quite a few people who utilize this in their trading. Because it helps them to see the different, um, well, it helps them to draw their support and resistance zones. So for those of you who know about support and resistance, um, the line chart is very, is very good to help you see exactly where these zones are. So for example, right here, we can see that this is a possible resistance zone. You could draw right here. Another one would be right here as a support. So this is one way that we use the line chart when trading. Another one is, let me look at the Renko chart. No, well, let me look at bars first. The bar chart, it's kind of similar to the candles, but yeah. I don't like it because for me this doesn't really give me any good information. This just looks like some broken ladders. Okay, and I don't really know how to interpret this, but everybody has their own way of trading and everybody utilizes these different types of candles and formations 
to their advantage. Um, this one is an area chart. Yeah. Um, Renko is also popular. Renko is very popular, but it's only available on the daily chart. Or if you want to upgrade, then you'll get access to these as well. So the Renko chart, it has, I think the Renko chart has the best, um, it has the best candle formation in terms of identifying the trends. So I think this one is kind of better than the Heikinashi because it can clearly show you what type of trend is happening at any given time. But the thing about the Renko, the Renko doesn't depend on time. So all the other candlestick formations, they are based on time. However, the Renko is just based on what happens with price. Okay, so that's the main difference by using the Renko and the other um, candlestick formations. I personally, I just prefer to use either the normal candlesticks or I will use the Heikinashi because for me that's more simple. Okay, so let's see what else we can take a look at. Let's see what this is. So if we want to add other assets, so for example, maybe we don't want to look at GBP USD, maybe we want to look at USD CAD. We can easily change it from here and we type in USD CAD and you will see the different options that you have, of course. TradingView has data from forex.com and they have data from Oanda, they have data from FXCM. So they have a lot of different sources of data. So for you, you can just choose whichever works best for you. Normally, I just use Oanda because you know it's, it's it doesn't it doesn't really even matter to me I think because um, let me just clear this off because I usually just use whatever is available to me I don't really care about where I get the source information from but what I recommend that you do don't use this to add the symbols if you want to add the yeah don't use this to add the symbols or to compare symbols it's better you just come over here well, I'm going to show you that later. So let me just finish this top row first. All right. I'm going to show you how to add your symbols later properly to your chart. So the next one now would be your indicators. Now, many Forex traders, they love to use indicators while trading because it makes their trading a lot easier. Uh, a very common indicator would be the moving average. Okay, and you can see it's added to the chart. Note, to analyze this is very simple. Most people have a very simple rule that if the price is above the moving average, it's an uptrend. And if the price is below the moving average, it's a downtrend. So most people would try to enter the trade when either of these things happen. And I also sometimes use the moving average when I'm trading. Okay, so normally I would try to enter a trade, enter a sell position when my Heikinashi is red and it's also below the moving average right here. Okay, and you are also able to change the style of the moving average too. Many people use 9, most people use 50. 50 I think is the most popular moving average and they tend to use this type of moving average when they are on the one hour chart or the four hour chart. Okay. So that's generally what people like to use this type of moving average to do. And moving averages are very good because they do help you to identify the trend. So for example, right here we see that once price is below this moving average, it continued down. Once price is above the moving average, it continues up. So the thing about trading is there's no one indicator or one um, rule that can help you to be profitable. Um, 
it's all about your analysis and all about confluence okay and what I mean by confluence is basically when you use more than one system to decide whether or not to enter your trade so let me give you an example if I'm going to trade using the moving average yes I would wait until the price is below the moving average but maybe I want to see my Heike Nashi turn red as well and then I would enter so that way I will be using two things to help me enter the trade one price has to be below the moving average two my Heike Nashi would have to be red so that's why I would enter so of course I wouldn't be entering a sell position here because it's green and it's going up I would wait until it's here to enter my cell the next thing also applies if I'm going to enter by my Heike Nashi has to be above the moving average and it also has to be green so I would be entering right here I wouldn't be entering on a red candle okay so yeah so that's how you use indicators to help you with your trading so and the good thing about indicators is if you find one that you like you can easily just add a favorite you can put a star right there so that you can you will always have access to it very quickly okay all right next thing that I want to show you that you need is um, maybe alerts I think alerts would be good for you so maybe you want to set an alert when a price is at a certain value so maybe you want to get an alert on your phone or on your computer when price is at a certain level so I would come right here let me show you what I did click create alert I can choose to send email show pop-up or notify on the app so if you have the trading view app on your phone it's going to be very easy to get the notification there um, let me show you actually I'm going to show you what the app looks like and if you can see that but that's the trading view app for the phone and you can see all the assets and everything and let me see the app is very slow so that's what I hate yeah but it's there now yeah the app can be slow yeah but the same view that you get on the computer is the same view that you would get on the app so whenever the alert happens on the computer you'll also get a push notification on the app to alert you for possible trades so this is also what I use to help me with my trading because I'm sure you don't want to be sitting at the charts all day just looking at everything and just waiting and waiting and waiting you have to eat breakfast you have to cook you maybe you have a job so yeah definitely um, alerts are very good to help people with uh, their trading all right so what's next is maybe I can show you how to add the different symbols all right so let's do that I'm going to show you how to add the different symbols onto your chart so you get it by going over here to your watch list now what your watch list is is very simple it's all the assets that you are watching so if you are a person who loves to trade GBP USD GBP JPY AUD you would add all your assets right here for me I have um, GBP USD GJ AUD and ZD and all those so I can just change this to see all the different assets so that's what you do very simple so if you want to add another asset pair maybe you want to add GBP CAD so you go to add symbol and as you can see you have stocks futures Forex CFD crypto 
index and economy. Now, if the option all is selected, you can just type in GBP CAD and you'll be able to add it. And remember I said you can add it from any source, it doesn't really matter. Um, if you want to add, well, you can just select Forex actually to see all the Forex pairs available to you. And you can manually go through this list, but that's very time consuming. So what I normally do is I just go here and just, I just type what I want. So if I want GBP AUD, that's what I type. If I want GBP CAD, that's what I type. Very simple. Okay. All right. So that's pretty much that. I think, and over here we you see we have the alerts thing again. So once you set an alert, you can go over here and actually see if your alerts are being activated and if they're being sent to you. So this is what many people use to find out if their criteria that they set up is working properly. So these are some old alerts that I have. Let me just remove them. Yeah, let me just remove these old ones because I'm not using them anymore. Okay, so that's your alerts tab. Over here will be news. So you will be able to see all the past and previous news um, that's being done because as you know, the Forex market is all about news and what's happening with the economy. So for example, if oil prices are high, it may affect all the currency pairs as well. And if something important is happening in, in London, uh, then GBP USD or Euro GBP would be affected. So this is where people normally go to get most of their news. You see all the news here from November and all that stuff. All right. So, so far, these are the most important things that you need to use TradingView. You definitely don't need to know how to use every tool. Sorry, but these are the basic ones that you really need. Now, another set of tools that you need are your drawing tools. Now, you need these tools to help you to identify different things on the chart that, that you, may, you may need to identify. So if we go back here to the top left hand corner, we will see a lot of options, but we will go down to the drawings panel and then you will see this area come right here. Now, most of you guys love to trade using trend lines. So you can easily select a trend line here and you would use it to automate some parts of your training. So this is my ascending trend line. So of course, as you guys know, if price closes below the trend line, uh, there's a good chance it's going to go down. Not all the time though, okay. And so that's my ascending trend line. And let me draw a descending trend line for you. Okay, very simple. So if price closes above this trend line, price is going up, but not always, as I'm sure you guys know. Okay, so those are trend lines, but say for example, maybe you want to draw support and resistance zones. So that's something that we could do as well. So let me draw a support and resistance zone for you. And as you guys know, a support and resistance zone is basically an area on the chart where they say that price is very reactive. Okay, so let me give you an example right here. So this would be an support and resistance zone because price has come here and price has come here in the past this so you can see the resistance was created right here price came up but it fell down so obviously there is a force pushing down price from this area so this would become your resistance zone um, so normally how traders trade is they look at these zones just to see 
if price is going to behave that same way again or if price is going to push through this zone so everybody is going to watch to see that if when price comes up to this zone again if it's going to push back down or is it going to burst through and continue and in this case we can see that it pushed down a little bit but then it pushed through it and then closed above it and continued to go up okay so this is how people normally use a horizontal line they use it to draw their support and resistance zones but you can also use your rectangle if you use your rectangle I think it's a little bit easier because you can see the area better let me draw another one so as you know this is my resistance this is my support so price came up here it went down so this became the support then price went back up here it sold off this resistance and it came back down to support and people bought price here and pushed it up through breaking through this resistance area so this is basically how most traders use these drawing tools um, another use for them is that some of them well I use this tool it's called my pip counter I use it to count the number of pips that I that I would make in a position so let me look at Friday I can see that on Friday okay so on Friday GBP USD it went down for about 85 86 pips yeah 85 or 86 pips so this is what people normally use to um, count how many pips they would get from certain positions okay and I guess another accurate way of of doing this is using the long position tool or the short position tool now for many traders who use risk to reward ratios when they're trading they would use the long position tool or the short position tool to kind of plan how they would enter a trade so for example if they plan to enter a trade right here with a stop loss of maybe 20 that's what they would do so this is kind of how they use these tools to measure their entries and measure their risk to rewards all right but uh, i'm going to stop this video here because it's kind of long <laughs> but definitely in future videos i'm going to show you guys how to create a trading plan okay and how to apply a trading plan to uh trading view and how to use it to improve your trading all right guys so i hope you enjoyed this video about how to use trading view um, please remember to like subscribe and comment and tell me what type of videos that you guys want to see in the future all right guys so do take care and i'll see you next time